holes? The diameter. The diameter of this pocket from the print, it shows a radius of three quarters of an inch. So the diameter is an inch and a half, 1.5 inches. I'm going to type that in. The next question is asking clean out. And we have a choice here. We have a word, so I'm going to hit the toggle button. There's only two choices, yes and no. What clean out is asking is, if I say yes to that, the tool will start in the center and clean out the entire circular pocket. If you say no to that question, the tool starts in the middle, runs out to the inside of the circular pocket, and just runs around it once and comes back into the center. Well, the only time you'd really use no for clean out is if there was already a hole there. And for instance, if you had a casting that had a hole there and you were just cleaning up the inside maybe to set a bearing in that hole. Well, I'm going to say yes in this case because I have a solid piece of material, so I want it to clean out the entire inside of that circular pocket. The next question is it wants to know how deep of a circular pocket should I make? Well, I want to machine through my one inch stock, so I'm going to type in one inch and 50 thousandths. The next question after that is the per pass mount. What, what Intercon has is a nice feature here is it enables you to machine that circular pocket in chunks. So it's simply asking me, how much do you want to machine per pass? Well, I'm going to pick a conservative 0.1 of an inch. That means that Intercom will ramp down to 0.1 of an inch, machine that circular pocket, and then do it again and again and again until it gets to my final depth. The next question is the plunge rate. Plunge rate is how fast in inches a minute will Intercon plunge down to the first per pass depth that we set at 0.1 inch. After that, it wants to know what type of plunge do we want to do. We can straight plunge or do a ramp plunge. Well, I really like to use the ramp plunge because you don't have to have a hole drilled here and you don't have to use a center cutting end mill. And I'm going to type in 15 degrees for the angle for my plunge. In general, the angle that you want to use, you should make that angle smaller for the larger the diameter tool that you're using. A small tool can plunge at a steep angle. A large diameter tool needs a shallower angle. Whatever angle you pick, Intercom will sit here and zigzag down back and forth, almost sawtooth back and forth, down till it gets to that first per pass rate, which we have set at a tenth of an inch. In a lot of the can cycles in Intercon, you have separate information for both roughing and finish pass. This is a great feature to have Intercon automatically create a finish pass for us. So the first question it wants to know for the rough cuts is how do I want to machine the rough cut? And again, I see a word, so I'm going to hit the F3 button to toggle. And there's two choices here, climb and conventional mill. I'm going to go ahead and leave it set on conventional, so I conventional mill out the rough cut. The next question is the step over for the rough cut. What this is, is how much are we going to step over each revolution as we're machining out? It's basically the tool load. And you'll see the number in here, there's a number already in here, 0.225. What Intercon did is it took 0.6 times our diameter of our tool that we're using to machine this circular pocket. So it already stuffed the number in there. Well, that's a little aggressive for the fee rates and stuff that I'm doing here today. I'm going to be pretty conservative, so I'm going to knock that down to 0.15 of an inch. I could always come back later and bump that up. It's pretty easy to do. And the last question for the rough cut is how fast do I want to rough out the inside of this circular pocket? I'm going to put in 25 inches a minute. And the first question on the finish pass is, again, how do you want to machine the finish pass? Do you want to climb millet, conventional millet, or none? Well, uh, if you leave it set at none, what that means is it will rough to the final diameter, which is an inch and a half. Well, I want a finish pass, so I'm going to leave it set to climb. And then I'm going to give it the finish pass amount. I'm going to type in 0.025. What the finish pass amount is, that's how much the roughing pass will leave for the finish pass. Um, and then we have the last question is the feed rate for the finish pass. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit since we're climb milling. And that'll give us a real nice finish on the inside of our circular pocket. Just like before, at any point, I can hit the graph button and get a graph of what we're working on. And the graph, graph the front view, that's the view that I was looking at last time. You'll see our circular pocket lines here. If I hit the view button again, I get the top view. There you see our circular pocket. What you're looking at are the yellow lines of the center line of the tool, and the red lines are rapids, and the gray lines are what you end up with. That's the outside diameter of the drill that we had spec for drilling the holes. Well, let's look at the circular pocket here a second. You can see it cleaning out, conventional milling, cleaning out, the inside roughing it. The inside line of this double line is the last pass on the rough. 
and the outside line is the finish pass. The finish pass is going to go climb milling, so you see it radiusing off here as it leaves, as it's done with the climb mill, so it doesn't leave a tool mark. That's looking real good, so I'm going to hit escape to get back to programming. This information that we typed in looked good in the graph, so I'm going to hit F10 to accept that into my program. Okay, all we have left to do is to program the lines and the arcs that are necessary to have the cutter run around the perimeter of this part, this contour. Well, this is going to be a little different to program than we did for the circular pocket and the bolt hole circles. Because in the circular pocket and the bolt hole circles, we got to use can cycles. It's a quick, easy way to program uh, a standard shape. Well, this is not a standard shape to run around the outside, so we're going to have to program this with lines and arcs. And we're going to program the points, the data, off the print, which is the actual endpoints of all these lines and arcs. And we're going to make use of a feature called Cutter Comp, which will automatically offset the tool a half a diameter off the program path. This is a nice feature. It makes programming easier. Well, let's see. Where do we want to start here? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a place away from the contour, up over here, out of the way. Um, a lot of times it's a good idea to start where there's no material and then machine into the material so you don't have to plunge in the material. So I'm going to start off of this point and come out an inch. So remember we said our x, y, zero positions here in the center. So what's the x, y position of a point out here an inch away? Well it would be x minus one and y positive whatever this distance is right here. Well off the print the radius shows a 2.45 inches, so from there to there is 2.45. So a point out here where I'm going to start the contour, this is where we're going to start to program, is going to be x negative 1, y positive 2.45. And right now, when we were done with the circular pocket, as you see right here, our end position on the circular pocket says 0, 0, 0.1. That means the tool is sitting right here at zero, 00 when it's done machining the circular pocket a tenth of an inch above the workpiece. I'm going, the next move we're going to do, we're going to do a rapid from this position that'll lift the tool up and wrap it over to this position here so we can begin to program our contour. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit F1, rapid, and I'm going to type in the point that we decided to go to to start, which is X negative one inch and Y positive 2.45. Um, the next question is, is asking me what Z height. Well, when we do that rapid from our zero position to our start of our contour, how high do you want the tool to be? Well, I'm going to lift it up an inch just to be on the safe side. I don't have anything in the way there, but um, a few bolt heads stick.